Pooh Shiesty was one of the biggest rappers in the game before he got caught up in an alleged robbery and shooting that has him facing eight years in prison. But before he ever recorded a track or caught a case, his own pops was making moves in the streets and started his own record label. Today, we're looking at the wild story of Memphis legend Mob Boss, aka Pooh Shiesty's dad. Let's get right into it. Lontrell Williams Sr., aka Mob Boss, is a Memphis native from the south side of the city. Memphis is known for its food and music scene, but it's also one of the deadliest cities in America. The murder rate is damn near seven times higher than the national average, and in South Memphis, any day could be your last. The savage environment has ended a lot of lives too early, but it also birthed some of the most talented rappers ever, like Yo Gotti and Young Dolph. Mob Boss is one of those dudes who was born into a bad situation and did whatever he could to survive. Not much is known about his early life, but the first time he made headlines was in 2004 after he was charged with accessory after the fact to a first degree murder. Rebecca Glenn was a 24 year old Memphis radio DJ who was murdered and robbed by a dude named Stanley Andrews. According to the police, Andrews broke into Glenn's apartment complex and started knocking on random doors. Tragically, when Glenn opened her door to see who was trying to get in, Andrews forced his way into the apartment and killed her. After the murder, Mob Boss and a woman named Marquita Thomas used Rebecca's credit cards, then helped Andrews sell some of her stolen possessions on the street. And later, they was both charged with accessory after the fact to first degree murder and forgery. Rebecca Glenn's murder was so brutal and tragic that it shocked the community. Stanley Andrews' sister couldn't believe what happened. She was the one who dropped him off at the apartment complex that night because he was drunk and wanted to see his girlfriend, who was allegedly in the building. Andrew's sister told Action News 5 that he called her from jail and told her what happened, saying, From what he said, the lady, I guess, went off on him or something for knocking on her door. So he just, I guess, he just snapped or whatever. But if rumors are true, this wasn't a random attack, but a targeted hit. Andrew's sister said she was shocked by what her brother did and told Action News 5, I still don't understand. I'm still thinking it's a dream because I can never think this in a million years. But after he was arrested, he ain't act like someone who just snapped and killed a random woman. His sister told reporters that he showed no remorse at all. According to rumors, Rebecca Glenn was actually killed over rap beef. Some people say that she was playing music from Yo Gotti on the radio, but refused to put on Mob Boss or anyone else from his label, Mob Ties Records. Mob Boss allegedly put a hit out on Glenn for the disrespect, but there's no real evidence to back these claims up. Yo Gotti was already a Memphis rap legend, but running the CMG label took things to the next level. With a roster full of some of the game's hottest rappers like Mozzie, Fotu Doug, ESTG, and Moneybag Yo, Gotti's become a certified legend. But back in the day, Mob Boss was trying to do the same thing with his Mob Ties label. Pooh Shicey told Audio Mac in 2021 that watching his dad go hard in the studio helped him get to where he is today. Talking about Mob Boss, Shicey said, he was on a CEO P type of level. He had his own record label called Mob Ties Records. I saw how they gotta get ready to go do shows. I been knew about tour buses and all that, the tour life. I was real young around that time, around eight through 10, but I was learning how the studio works. I learned where the booth at, how the mic set up, how the sessions work. I was on the road with him when he had shows because he was booked up around that time. Mob Boss had some local success with his music, but never popped off like his son did. One reason his career ain't blow up is that he couldn't stay out of trouble with the law. In 2006, he pled guilty to the accessory after the fact charge he caught in the Rebecca Glenn case and was sentenced to a year of supervised probation. It seemed like he caught a lucky break with the light sentence, but a year later, he was arrested again and charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm and several drug offenses. The story of what went down was later told during a 2009 probation revocation hearing. Detective Cottrell Robinson from the Memphis Police Department testified that he served a narcotic search warrant in July 2007. According to him, the apartment they were searching was a known drug spot that they had been monitoring for over a month. Here's what went down according to his official testimony. He was the first man through the door and as he started up the stairs, he saw a man run from the apartment on the left to an apartment on the right. As he proceeded forward, he heard the sound of breaking glass and people saying, go man, go. Then a massive 75 pound pit bull came around the corner and charged at Cottrell. So he shot it three times and it retreated back into the apartment's kitchen. Cottrell knew someone was in the kitchen and told him to come out with the hands up. About 15 seconds later, Mob Boss came out and was put in cuffs. Then cops saw a broken window and a shoe that was left on the kitchen floor, which told them that someone had jumped out. When they searched the apartment, the cops found 12 and a half grams of cocaine, eight pounds of weed, two scales, ammo, equipment to cook crack, and a Smith & Wesson on the couch. They also found $10,000 in Mob Boss's pocket. During the hearing, Detective Robinson revealed that it was actually Mob Boss's cousin, Rico Johnson, who was named on a search warrant. According to him, both of them was under investigation, but Mob Boss just wasn't officially listed. Most rappers just put on a tough image and claim they made it out the trenches just to sell records. But 
Pooh Shisey is the opposite of those guys. He really comes from a wild environment and saw his own dad get his hands dirty. That's how Shisey caught a robbery charge at 11 years old and then his first assault case at 14. Mob Boss and him allegedly even caught a case together at some point, but it ain't clear exactly what happened. Mob Boss also allegedly has ties with the legendary Memphis drug kingpin, Ronnie Woods, who started the Memphis mob during the crack epidemic in the 80s. Woods basically ran Memphis for decades, operating a massive drug trafficking ring, using car washes and nightclubs to clean the money. Throughout the late 90s and early 2000s, he owned a spot called the Martini Room, where rappers, pro athletes, and drug dealers all hung out and partied. And at one point, he even dated Steve Harvey's wife. In 2019, Woods, his two brothers, and 35 other alleged Memphis mob affiliates was all charged in a massive indictment. This ain't the first time Woods has faced a long sentence, but with his past crimes and rep as a drug lord, this could be the case that puts him away for good. Early reports said that Mob Boss was naming the indictment too, but that don't seem to be the case. Even if he ain't facing legal issues of his own, he still has to worry about his son. Pooh Shisey was recently sentenced to 63 months in prison, and this week, he got even more bad news. TMZ reported that when Shisey eventually gets out, he'll be on supervised release for three years. That means he can't associate with any co-defendants or known gang members, and his parole officer can search him and his property to check for contraband anytime. He's also been ordered to go through a treatment program for drugs and alcohol. Five years is a long time to be in jail, but Pooh Shisey got off pretty easy. At one point, he was facing a life sentence. Then for a while, it looked like it could have been an eight-year sentence. Even though he's locked up, he just dropped his latest project, Shicey Season Certified, with features from Gucci Mane, Lil Durk, Jack Harlow, and more. Mob Boss obviously had a huge impact on his son. Instead of immediately signing with a big artist like Yo Gotti, Shicey took a page out of his pop's book and started his own label, Choppa Gang Entertainment. The first time he went viral was from his feature on the Choppa Gang track, Breaking News, where he opens his verse up with, Breaking News, bitch I'm Shicey, Pooh. Taking shit what I do. Shicey's greedy raw style is what helped him blow up overnight, and the lifestyle Mob Boss handed down to him is what gave him the experiences he talks about in his music. He also shouts his dad out on the track Monday to Sunday, rapping, Spin his block in the caddy, he's F and N's black and plastic. Miss Gladys raised a savage and said I shoot like my daddy. Unfortunately, the same things that made him famous is also what led to him getting locked up. Mob Boss taught his son how to move in the streets and the studio but that lifestyle always comes with risks, no matter how much support you have from family. Mob Boss is a dude who definitely lived up to his nickname, but now that his son is one of the hottest rappers in the game, hopefully he'll chill out and avoid any more legal trouble. Pooh Shicey could be granted early release if he don't cause issues in jail, so maybe him and his pops will be back together soon.